Right. So we've made some pizzas. We've made some squares, which wasn't so exciting. And we've made a bunch of rabbits that run around and do stuff that rabbits do. Um, let's now look at making object-oriented faces. And in fact, what you're seeing here on screen is exactly what we're going to make. Um, what we're not going to do is code all this together. It's just going to take too long. There's a lot of pieces. So um, instead, what we'll do is um, I'll run this for you. We'll talk about how it works. And then you can dig into the code a little more yourself. Um, it's a little hard to fit everything, but let's run this and you can see here, um, oh, it's a little small. I might have to shrink this. Let's try again. There we go. Um, so it's going to resize, you know, it draws this like grid of faces here. Um, so what I've done is I've created this face class and we'll talk about how this all works. Um, and it's applying, essentially it's like random emoji. It's um, applying some of these um, uh, face parts picking them randomly, and then also doing some animation um, that varies depending on which mouth is being drawn. So if it's a smiling mouth, it nods its head. And if it's a angry sort of frowning mouth or the tongue mouth, it shakes its head side to side like that. Um, so we let's talk about how this is working. Cool. It's a little hard to keep everything on screen as we start to get bigger here. Um, cool. All right. Uh, so the first thing is I have this um, variable. You can see my global variables are really minimal here. I've got one for faces, um, and that's my list of objects. Um, now, it's not being created yet because I want to be able to reset it. Um, it. So I'll show you how that works. And then I've got a list of eyes and a list of mouths. And this works a lot like in the last example with the rabbits. Um, it's loading all of those image files. So it's loading all the eyes and all the mouths. And then I'm doing this in preload. So preload, again, I don't want to have um, my program slowed down by loading a ton of these things, especially if it's not using them. Um, and these are all in a folder. So I've got these folders over here, one called eyes, one called mouths. Um, and there's no good way in JavaScript, unfortunately, to just like find all the files in a folder. That would be really nice. And in languages like Java or Python, you could do that. So in this case, I'm giving it all the file names. Um, and I've called them by things that I can remember what they are. And then I'm using a for loop to load them. And this is a good example of generating a dynamic file name where you might not want to, um, you know, I don't want to have to type all this stuff out here, but instead I know it's in a folder called mouths and I know it's a PNG file and I can combine those things together, those strings to make the file name. I load them and then I stick them in that array. And I do the same thing for the eyes. There's a whole bunch in this array here. Um, so this just works really well. Um, Cool. Then in my setup, I create my faces. So you'll notice here I'm creating faces, the variable first as an empty array. And this is because what I want to be able to do is hit a key on the keyboard and have it regenerate. Um, and so this way, because uh, we can actually call setup. And if we look in our key press down here, if any key is pressed, it just runs the setup function. Um, and this would then clear that array and start over. Otherwise, it would add more faces to that array, and it wouldn't really work the way we wanted it to. Then I'm using a nested for loop um, to create a grid. So essentially, it starts at 200, it ends at height less than 200, and it's spaced by 300 pixels. And then I create a new face. And we'll look at that class in a second in that position and add it to the array. So this is very similar to how we did the rabbits in the last example. Um, we give it an x and y position. I'm just using a for loop to create this grid. And then in the draw, this is also very simple. I'm using another for loop here to run the display method of my faces class. Uh, so that's it here. Uh, you'll notice that I've got a second JavaScript file that includes my face class. And we'll talk about all the stuff that's going on here in a second. But as a reminder, if you want to do that, um, you just go up here and click on Create File. Um, and then you would name it. So we could call this you know, face2. Don't forget the .js. You do have to include that. Um, I'm going to not. Go ahead and do that. And then in your index, you have to import that file. So where it says sketch.js here, this loads that JavaScript file. And I just added another line with face.js, which is the name of my file over here. So you need to do that. Otherwise, your um, you know, P5.js won't uh, load that extra file. OK, 
So here's my class, and this is where all the work is happening. Um, and this is also kind of great. It's a lot like under animation, we talked about your draw being kind of an outline or a script. Um, in the same way, all the hard work is in my class, which leaves my setup and draw really pretty simple. So in my constructor, I'm passing the X and a Y. We talked about that. Um, I've got some generic settings. These are going to be applied to all the faces. So they're all the same size. Um, the I, X, and Y positions are all going to be the same on these. You could certainly randomize this or something. Um, and this just helps me you know, keep track of where everything's going to go. And then I'm loading um, ran or using random face parts. So um, uh, essentially, excuse me, this is creating a random index in the mouse um, array. Remember, we loaded that in preload. And then it's setting a variable called mouth to be that mouth. Does the same thing for both the eyes. In this case, I'm letting it have both eyes be different, um, which I think is kind of fun. You get these weird sneering faces and stuff. Um, you could experiment with this and see. Then uh, well, let's come back to the nodding stuff because this is a little more complicated, but we use some of that stuff there. And then um, the display is real simple. We push, we translate to that position of the X and Y position. Um, I draw the overall face as a circle. Um, I, again, I picked this color um, from the emoji set, which is kind of fun. Um, it's instantly recognizable, I think. Um, again, we'll talk about nod in a second. And then I just use images to display the face parts. Um, in fact, let's, let's turn this off for now so we can see it without. So this is it without the nodding, shaking head thing. Um, so the images, uh, I do image mode center, that way I'm drawing it, um, you know, like a, a circle, not like a, a rectangle from the corner. And then I'm just drawing the left eye in its position, the right eye and the mouth, the same thing. Super easy. Um, and so now if I have a little more room, it'll generate, and if I hit any key on the keyboard, it'll regenerate these faces. Which is pretty fun. So then the nodding part, let's add this back in. So there's two pieces to this. The first is we need to know, um, well, I've got a couple of values. I've got the speed. This is how much offset, sort of how much it's moving per frame. So this is like with the rabbits, how far it's gonna move. Um, I have a maximum amount. I've sort of tuned this to look nice. So um, it moves by a maximum of 15 pixels. And then this nod offset um, is sort of a number that keeps track of that offset. So it goes, it fluctuates up and down. And then um, depending on which mouth is chosen, I want it to go up and down or left and right. Um, so I, you know, I'm using it based on the index, which um, eye image it's working with. Um, it's going to vary based on that. So, you know, if you add more, you might need to change this. Um, but if it's zero or three, uh, which is the frowny face or the tongue face, um, then it doesn't nod, essentially then it shakes its head. Um, otherwise it's gonna go up and down. So this um, gets done up here in the constructor because the mouth is not changing. Then down here in my display, I say, if not is true, then I wanna translate none in the X direction, only in the Y direction. I wanna go up and down. Otherwise I wanna do the same over here. Um, and then I just change that offset amount by the speed and then reverse that. So really it's kind of like the rabbit. You can think of it like the rabbit bouncing around on screen, except in this case, it goes over here until it hits the side, then it reverses direction, kind of like this, super simple. There's not a lot here. Now, I mean, it's it looks simple. It took a while for me to figure out kind of like the best way to do this. So it's easy to say it's simple now, but um, you know, this is, Everything with code is like this. It takes a lot of experimentation, trial and error, dead ends, um, things not going right for sure. But what's really nice then is that I could make it go more or less. So now it can go further. We can make that even more. Oh, we could actually really, now that that's not looking right, right? Because we get these like bulging eye things. That's maybe that is what you're after. Probably not. Um, but we can change the amount here to kind of fit. That seems pretty good. Um, and we could change the speed. So we could make it faster, we could make it slower, or you could randomize it. 
so you could make it you know bet really between a really slow value and something fast and you can see now they're different which is kind of fun so um, in this case i wanted it to all be synchronized um, because i think there's something fun about seeing them all you know, kind of all moving at the same rate, um, but maybe you wanted to experiment with them being random, um, you know, and again, all these cool ideas come to your head. You're like, oh, I could have it follow the cursor. So they're like looking around. That could be really fun. Lots of stuff you could add to this. Um, but the idea here that I wanted to show you is again, this idea of lists of these things um, and that you could make really complex um, kinds of graphics using this. Like it doesn't have to just be squares and circles and stuff like that. Um, so I'm using a combination of, you know, drawing the circle for the face, but then the parts I made in Photoshop um, and I'm loading those in as images and then using, yeah, again, the ideas of animation um, that we've talked about before to make this, I think a pretty cool, compelling sort of animation. Um, in the next example, we'll look at something super different, um, but also I think really compelling and cool.